draws tend to get a bad rap in chess. However, some of the most incredible chess games ever played have been draws. Today's game has been called the Immortal Draw, and it's very easy to see why. The spectacular play begins on move three and continues unabated through the end of the game. I give you my number four best chess game from before 1900, Hamp vs. Meitner from Vienna, 1872. This game is basically going to be normal for all of two moves by both players. Those moves are e4, e5, and knight c3, bishop c5. And at this point, we get knight to a4, clearly indicating that we are not going to have a normal game. Now, knight a4 is not a good move, but I will say it's not crazy, not totally amateurish. These days, grandmasters and even players like myself sometimes play knight a4 this early in the game against the Grunfeld. The idea in this case is to say, hey, bishop, why don't you just move back? I'll develop my pieces. I'll bring my knight back at some point. And I won't have been annoyed by your strong bishop on c5. And I won't have had to worry about annoying things like bishop takes f2 check, right? Let's just not do that. Well, black says, actually, I'm going to be annoying right away and play bishop takes f2 check. This deserves the two exclamation points that it has right here. It is a very strong move. Black is already better. And a big problem for white is that this knight over here on a4 is tactically vulnerable. LPDO, loose pieces drop off. A lot of tactics for black are now going to revolve around the fact that the knight can just get picked up in some cases because it's hanging out here and there will be various forks and other things at play. So king takes f2, you don't really have a choice. Queen h4 check. Now in this position, one line that I really enjoy uh, is g3, right? We're obviously hitting the pawn over here on e4, which is a big point of the sacrifice here of the bishop on f2. In this position, queen takes e4, and we have a fork, the rook and the knight. And you might be like, well, that stinks. White can basically resign. But it's not nearly that simple. For example here, queen e2, right? Saying, all right, if you take over here, I take here, and it's still very complicated, and the computer actually thinks that white will be better. But if you take the rook, then there's queen takes check. We're hitting here. We might have maybe some ideas of uh, trapping your queen on h1. We're also hitting c7. So after this check, we actually have king f8, the best move according to the engine, and queen takes c7. Uh, I still have ideas like this that can help develop. I'm generally ahead in development. I'm threatening your bishop. I'm threatening mate in one, which is very nice. And in this position, the engine says that black is a little bit better, like plus a half pawn, but it's very unclear. I think this would be a lot of fun for both players. This doesn't actually happen though. White instead says, all right, I'm holding on to my e4 point and I'm going to play king to e3. Obviously, you don't really like to have your king on the third rank on move five in a chess game. That's generally considered bad. Still, it's pretty complex here. Black is a bit better, but there's many things that can go wrong for both players. So we get queen f4 check, king over to d3, d5, a great move from black. Here, for example, you can't take on d5 because of just queen takes a4. This is the loose uh, pieces drop off problem that we talked about with the knight. I think if it were me, I'd be trying to support this point right here and I'd want to play a move like queen e1 saying, all right, if you take over here, you can't take with the queen at least, which is what you want to do. That keeps your pieces more fluid. If you take with the pawn, I'll just step over and all right, maybe I'm okay here. I have, I don't know, possibly queen g3 at some point. I've got the idea of pushing this d pawn and attacking your queen. Um, and yeah, you've picked up another pawn, but your e-pawns are doubled, and that's actually kind of forming a wall that stops your queen from checkmating my king, and I appreciate that. It's all very complex, but this is actually pretty good for white. The tension should remain here, actually. Black should keep that and play a move like knight f6, and then you might have g3, capture on e4, step over, and here you can't play queen b4 checkmate because your e-pawn is annoyingly in your way and your queen is under attack. But after the queen comes back, she might find another way to get into the action over here. Black still has a very strong attack. Obviously the king's not happy and things continue from here. In the game, white is really gonna run for it with the king. The king is trying to get to the a file as fast as possible. So king c3, not trying to hold the e4 point. Instead, 
Let's get the king out of here. And also let's maybe have the idea of pawn d3 or pawn d4. I will free my bishop and I will attack your queen. So now we get uh, queen takes e4, probably not the best move or definitely not the best move. Better was pawn d4 check. This is a very strong move. The king should just run over here. The game remains complex with black having more than enough compensation after taking the pawn. You don't want to step back with the king because of pawn f5, and this point is a problem. <laughs> this is a nearly decisive attack for black because white cannot hold the e4 point together, and when it goes, everything collapses. So, very strong idea for black. Instead, after queen takes e4, White misses almost the same opportunity. White could now have played pawn d4 instead of allowing black to play it. And this is a really helpful move. It frees up the position. A key point here that maybe white missed is if pawn takes d4, well, you could do this, which actually preserves some advantage for white, but much more natural and better is queen takes. Now, queen e1 check is a scary fork, but bishop d2, a brilliant rook sacrifice that defends the bishop on f1. And after queen takes, there are a ton of threats here for white. Queen takes g7 is a big threat. Bishop b5 check. <laughs> Picking up the queen on a1 is a bigger threat. And white's attack here is actually nearly decisive. Unfortunately for white, white missed that and continued with the plan of running with the king to the a file as fast as possible. So king b3. Now, Black in this position could have just played a move like knight c6 or pawn d4. Both moves maintain a strong attack, and black is better. Instead, black played knight a6. And there are obviously a lot of things going on here. One thing is this idea of queen to b4 checkmate. That's an important thing. White really needs to notice that. White could have a lot of uh, <laughs> advantage here by playing pawn d4, like we were talking about. This is a really good idea. Uh, another thing white can do is take on a6. Now, after taking on a6, I can understand that white might have not wanted to do this because of the idea of opening the b file for black. But in fact, the engine says that there's really not a lot to worry about. Amusingly, the top engine move here is king a3, succeeding in running the king to the a file via f2 by move 10, which is just great. I just love that this is a possibility. Um, instead, after knight a6, white doesn't either go for d4 or bishop takes a6. White plays pawn to a3, which is an interesting move. And this also preserves an advantage. Uh, a3 has two points. One is no checkmate. Good point. Another is I want to pull my king back to a2. Now, I know I can't do it right away because of queen takes a4. My king is actually defending the knight right now. But I just want to play knight c3, and then after your queen moves, I'll go back to a2. You're not going to checkmate me anymore, and I'm up a piece. And this idea would basically maybe not win for white. Black would still have some compensation, but it's close to winning for white if black didn't have a big idea that prevents the king from just stepping back. And that is... Queen takes a4 check. Certainly a move worthy of two exclamation points. Brilliant queen sacrifice. And obviously this move really kind of is the centerpiece of what uh, makes this game the immortal chess draw. Now, obviously you've just lost the knight. So if you try to run now, you're just losing. You're down two pawns and you've lost the extra piece that you had, etc. So you have to take the queen. I want to be really clear here. After white takes the queen, king takes a4, white is winning or close to winning, but only if white finds one correct line. And by the way, guess who doesn't find the correct line? Stockfish. Stockfish is currently saying plus 7, plus 8, plus 9, depending on how long I let it think. That evaluation is just incorrect, and it hinges on a lot of variations that actually just get white checkmated. Black's attack is so unintuitive to Stockfish and so deep that it kind of pushes past the horizon. And as a result, Stockfish's analysis can't really be trusted. The human analysis done over the years is more accurate. In this position, we get knight c5 check. So white has three choices. I can go to a5 or b5 or b4. Where do I go? First off, 
King A5 is really not the right move. <laughs> King A5 actually just gets mated in six moves. So Stockfish thinks this one's bad <laughs> and Stockfish is right. B6 check, why would I have wanted to go to A5 and allow you this move with tempo? And let's just play a, a quick line, King B4, A5 check. Let's say King C3, because if you go up here, then there's immediate mate. So King C3, D4, it's perfect how the um, knight and pawns come together to cover all of these squares. So King C4, and in this position, fastest is pawn C6, and you have your checkmates. There's no way to stop either bishop E6 uh, or bishop A6 on the next move. Check mate. Um, so that's no good. But hey, I can still pick one of these two squares, and Stockfish says both of these are winning. Well, King B5 is the right move. By the way, Stockfish says that the right move is King B4, and Stockfish is wrong. It's saying plus eight, and this is the most recent version of Stockfish. It's not super high depth, but it's calling for King B4, and that's not the right move. The right move is King to B5. Now, Black can consider here A5, but after a5, one point is if this, this actually transposes to the game. So that's one possibility. But b4 also looks like a good winning try. So I think a5 is maybe not the right way for white to for black to try to win this. After king b5, b6 is another move to consider. But I think a key point here is white wants to give back material to break the attack. And it's easiest to do here. d4 is a really good move. And then after pawn takes d4, queen takes d4, white is just going to, as fast as possible, take the knight on c5. Without that knight, the attack breaks down. We've given back the queen, but we're still up a piece for white. White wins the game. So after king b5, best seems to be knight e7. Not even trying to defend this knight, but the knight uh, on e7 is covering d5, which is so critical. And the winning line here is... I think really complex. Pawn c4. If you take on c5, you transpose to the game. We'll see why that doesn't win for white. But after pawn c4, white is able to win the game, although things remain complex. Pawn d4, king takes on c5, a5, and black just wants to play b6 and then uh, bishop to d7 and checkmate. The only way the only way for white not to get checkmated here is to play queen a4 check, and after king d8, you must play queen takes a5, giving up your queen. But again, after giving up your queen, you will be up a piece. Now, black still has kind of some compensation in this particular line, and this is the best white can deal with, but it's close to winning for white. Here, you can consider either e4 kind of maintaining some positional compensation, or you can go for b5 trying to deliver on an attack. In either case, though, it's not quite enough. You can't finish things off. But the only way for white to get here is to basically be better than Stockfish and to find this line with c4 and to appreciate that nothing else is winning. So that's not you know, too big of a concern, right? Practically, black's chances are probably better. Probably black wins more games than white after this queen sacrifice. So... The move played in the game is king b4, which is objectively a mistake. a5 check, brilliant, sacrificing the knight, but covering the b4 square. So if you step back with king c3, then d4 check and king c4, b6, and you have the checks on the light squares that are actually leading to a draw, either with a perpetual, um, in some cases with bishop a6 and bishop b7, but more likely with bishop e6 and d7 because you're never allowing king d5, uh, which you could also kind of cover with 97, but the fastest draw is going to be bishop e6, bishop e7. So after a5 check, we get king takes c5, eliminating the knight. At this point, white's thinking, I'm just going to keep capturing all the pieces you sacrifice, and eventually you'll run out of pieces and you can't checkmate me, which actually works, um, but it doesn't win. So knight e7 here. Developing, defending this pawn right here. Uh, if, by the way, <laughs> in this position, so bl black is threatening here, b6 and bishop d7 mate. So, for example, knight f3, b6, and bishop d7 checkmate. That's what white needs to stop. And it's not easy to stop, right? There is, in fact, 
only one way that white can avoid getting checkmated here. It is bishop b5 check, king d8, and then bishop c6. A brilliant save by white. I think black gets most of the credit for all the brilliant moves in this game, including the queen sacrifice on a4 and a5 check and other things we're going to see. But white also plays some great moves, and bishop c6 is the best move that white plays. It's the only saving move. After bishop c6, in this position, if you capture the bishop, either way, then you're going to break your attack. Pawn takes c6, and you no longer have b6, so the king is totally safe on the dark square c5. You don't have a dark squared bishop. You have a light squared bishop. Your knight is terribly placed to get to a square where it can attack c5, and you can't get a checkmate with the rook because white is always, after pawn d4, going to be able to cover a5 and b5, and white is up a queen. Just up a queen here. And basically the same is true after knight takes c6. Here, king takes d5. The king has captured a critical pawn on d5 and easily evades uh, all of black's threats. And white is, again, just up a queen. So after bishop c6, this bishop must be ignored. Pawn to b6. And now king b5. Unfortunately, the bishop is stopping your ideas of bishop d7 checkmate. <laughs> it's in the way. So knight takes on c6. And you might be thinking, okay, do I have to take here or can I run away? Well, you have to take there because if you don't, for example, knight f3, then bishop d7, and no matter what, knight d4 is going to be a discovered checkmate next turn. For example, king a4 at least now is not double check and checkmate, but it's still discovered check and checkmate on the board. A really pretty checkmate. So, after knight takes c6, that knight must be eliminated. King takes c6. And now bishop to b7 check, another brilliant move. If king captures bishop, then king d7. And you only have two rooks in your pawns left, but you're mating with this. It's a beautiful mating net. White has a check. White has no more checks. No more safe checks anyway, and it's mate in two at the most. Amazing. As a result, after bishop b7 check, the king has to step back to b5. And now, bishop a6 check. You can go back, and obviously there will be a perpetual check because you're repeating the position. Or you can go to a4. Don't do that. Because after king a4, there's bishop c4, and the next move, no matter what, is pawn to b5 and checkmate. So after bishop a6 check, it's king c6, and bishop b7 check, the move remains brilliant. And this draw here with bishop uh, a6, bishop b7, and king c6, king b5 ends the game on move 18. I don't know about you, but that's like the most action-packed 18 moves that I've ever seen in a chess game. Utterly incredible stuff. Well worth the mantle of a mortal chess draw, in my opinion. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to see more of my favorite chess games from before 1900, click on that playlist that is popping up on your screen.